This is Big Play Thick, and welcome to the top five risers and fallers of 2018 quarterbacks. So what I've done is I've created a model using ESPN's total quarterback rating, and what this model does is it spits out a number of how good a quarterback is. And generally, according to total quarterback rating, um, 70 is the Pro Bowl season, um, and 50 is a quarterback in the NFL. Right, 50 is average quarterback play. So if you're, if you're as a whole, your quarterback, your aggregate qu quarterback rating, which is what I call, um, call my number, if your aggregate quarterback rating is above 50, you deserve to be in the NFL. If we look at Ben Roethlisberger, Ben Roethlisberger's career aggregate total quarterback rating is 68.2, which puts him at fourth in the NFL. And I think that's pretty fair. Ben Roethlisberger is the fourth best quarterback in the NFL. Um, right now. Ben Roethlisberger is the fourth best quarterback in the NFL right now. And I think that's pretty fair. And that number that, you know, us, that is assigned to him is 68.2. So all the, you know, all the good quarterbacks are going to be 60 plus. All the superstar quarterbacks are going to be, you know, high 60s, 70s plus. Um, and some of the more questionable quarterbacks are going to be um, in the 55 and below area. Um, and if you're under 50, the NFL might not be the right business for you. So let's just get into it. The number five quarterback riser is Andrew Luck. He's seen his rating go up by 3.2 throughout this season so far in 2018. Andrew Luck started out, came into this year as a 63.0, which is pretty good. He's a, he's, he's a pretty good quarterback. That's Andrew Luck. Um, but this year, he's, he's only played better than that, and his rating has gone up to reflect that. Um, now playing at a 66.2 level. Um, that puts him in line with Phillip Rivers. He's a little bit worse than Phillip Rivers, but he's better than guys like Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz. So Andrew Luck pulls up in fifth for the quarterback risers this year. Fourth, we have Philip Rivers, the aforementioned. Um, you know, he came into this year as uh, 62.5, which is obviously, it's above 60. It's still pretty darn good. Um, but he was, he was less, you know, he was worse than guys like Russell Wilson and um, Andrew Luck, for example. But he's been able to pass both of those players due to his fantastic season this year. Um... And, you know, he really is having a really good season. He's having a Pro Bowl caliber season. His, 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 this season, he's playing at a 74.7 level, which is a not just a Pro Bowler, but a very good Pro Bowler. Um, that's the level he's playing at. And it, it shows in the Chargers record. They're looking like a very good playoff team and are going to be a force to be reckoned with in January. The third biggest riser is Drew Brees. Again, another quarterback who came into the year playing fantastic. His career um, aggregate quarterback rating is 66.8, almost a consistent pro bowler, which is, yeah, that's Drew Brees. He's really, really good. This year, he's played almost as good as Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, letting you know, guys know, Patrick Mahomes this year has been the best quarterback in football with an uh, aggregate rating of 81.8. .8. Drew Brees has been right behind that at 80.3. To put that in perspective, the third best quarterback this year, the 74.7 of Phillip Rivers, 75. Whole five points better than the third best quarterback. Drew Brees has been absolutely killing it. He is completely MVP discussion, um, which would actually be his first MVP if he wins this year, because he's never actually won an MVP. In second place for the biggest risers in the 2018 NFL season at quarterback play, we have Jared Goff. Now third place at Drew Brees, has had a rise of 5.8. Jared Goff, on the other hand, has had an increase of 17. The top two risers at quarterbacks this year have absolutely blown everyone out of the water as to how much they've improved um, from their career up until this year into now. So currently, Jared Goff uh, has an aggregate quarterback rating of 63.4, which puts him in the range of guys like Aaron Rodgers, 
Carson Wentz, Russell Wilson. That's the stratosphere of quarterback play that Jared Goff sits in right now. That's how good he is right now. Whereas going into this year, his career aggregate quarterback rating was was um you know a mere 46, which means you know maybe this guy shouldn't be in football. That's what that means. Um, now obviously, looking at that number, you would say that that's maybe that's not the most accurate reflection on how good Jared Goff actually is. Um, and I would probably agree with you on that. But what it what it does say is that Jared Goff was not was not the underlying success behind the Rams last year. However, this year, that is absolutely not true. He's playing at a Pro Bowl level. He is His total quarterback rating is over 70 this year. He's having a fantastic season. Um, and the difference between last year and this year is that his weapons last year were making him better, whereas this year, he's making his weapons look better. Coming is probably a little bit of a shock. I bet you guys were expecting to hear Patrick Mahomes' his name right here. And the reason I'm not including Patrick Mahomes on this list um, is because coming into this year, he only played one game. So that's the reason I'm not including um, Patrick Mahomes, only because he's only played one game in his career before 2018. So, you know, his improvement in quarterback play, is it, it doesn't mean anything. But pulling up number one is Mitchell Trubisky. This guy... Although not having the greatest season by quarterbacks, this year his total quarterback rating this year is 67.6, which places him in the top stratosphere of quarterbacks. Not not the you know elite tippy top, but the he's in that next level. He is one of he's playing like one of the top quarterbacks in football this year. One of the best quarterbacks in football, definitely top ten quarterback this year. This year, um, and coming into this year, you know he didn't really have much opportunity last year. Um, under the offense of John Fox, they didn't really let him pass the ball that much. But in Matt Nagy's offense this year, um, Trubisky has been pretty great. Um, and his improvement has has really shown. He's improved by a total of 25. If you're wondering what a difference of 25 actually means, you know, that's a big number, especially when, you know, the fifth best quarterback improvement was three, and Trubisky's at 25. Uh, the difference, that's that's similar to the difference between Drew Brees and Ryan Tannehill. That's how big of a jump Trubisky has made um, this year. So, you know, there's a reason that the Bears are leading the NFC North right now, um, and Trubisky is a big reason why. And now we get to the uh, the less fun part of the list, the top five losers of 2018. These five quarterbacks have seen their level of quarterback play decrease the most from their career up until this point in this season. So coming in at number five, the number five biggest drop is Tom Brady. He might be the GOAT. He is the GOAT, but he hasn't played like it this year. Coming into this year, his total quarterback level was 71.6, which if you're wondering what that is, he came into this year as the best quarterback in football. Um, and since then, he's seen his rating go down by 4.3, um, which is a pretty big, you know, that's a pretty big difference right there for an, a 10-game sample size compared to his entire career. He still played at a 63, uh, level of 63, which is at 63, Tom Brady this year is playing like Andrew Luck has throughout his whole career. So if if a, a pretty big down year for you is Andrew Luck, you're still pretty darn good. So um, we're not writing off Tom Brady just yet, um, but he's the number five biggest faller. Coming in at number four, we have Case Keenum. Now this is, again, um, a quarterback with not the biggest sample size. Uh, I think he only had a career... Um, 16, 17 games before this year, which is one season, it's, you know, same as uh, Trubisky, for example, um, which is why you can see a bigger variation um, in their uh, quarterback level. Um, but Keenum had a great year last year with the Vikings, and he hasn't 
at all played that way this year. Currently, his his aggregate quarterback level is 51.5, um, which means that he does deserve to be in football. But, you know, he's kind of on the border of that. 30, out of the 32 best quarterbacks in, the, in football, he's in the 25 to 32 area. Not writing him off, but, you know, he's unsurprisingly, Case Keenum has taken a uh, pretty big step back. So coming in as the third largest drop in quarterback level this year is Brock Osweiler, the Brock star. That's right, six foot eight, tall dude, but uh, hasn't played so well. You know, coming into this year, Brock Osweiler was, you know, barely an NFL quarterback as it was. Um, you know, his quarterback rating coming into the year was 50.7, which means that he's right on along the line of, of being a real NFL quarterback. You know, he's barely a real NFL quarterback. Um, but this year, he's, frankly, he just he's just played really, really badly. Um, he's actually been the worst um, qualified starting quarterback in football this year. The way he's played throughout his career, right now, he's just not an NFL quarterback. He's a backup. That's what he is. Coming to number two, this one also might be heresy. First, it was Brady. Coming to number two, Aaron Rodgers. And I know it hurts, it hurts to say it. But Aaron Rodgers hasn't been that good this year. Not to say he's been bad, because obviously he hasn't been bad. He's still Aaron Rodgers. Um, but just looking at the number, this year he's played at a level of 56.6. Um, which, if you're wondering what that is, that's worse than Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton this year has been better than Aaron Rodgers. Maybe maybe his back is tired from carrying the Packers for the last 10 years, but that's the only reason I can think of. Um, either way, his, his total quarterback level is taking a big hit, dropping 5.8. 5.8 being about the difference between Joe Flacco and Carson Wentz. Speaking of Joe Flacco, he's another quarterback that um, is having a better season than Aaron Rodgers right now. But... This leads us to number one, who by far is having the biggest decrease in quarterback play. And I don't know if it's going to come as a surprise to you, but um, it's Dak Prescott. You know, this year he's been a 51.4, which is kind of along the line of, like, barely an NFL quarterback. But the problem with Dak Prescott is that coming into the... Coming into the year, his his numbers were just ridiculous. He um, he had an aggregate quarterback level of seventy three point two. That's ridiculously high, um, and you're wondering how is that possible? He didn't have that great of a year last year, and I urge you to actually look really look back on last year. Um, he played pretty well. He did. It wasn't. It was nowhere near his rookie season. His rookie season was otherworldly. Um, but last year he still played pretty darn well. Um, he played last year, he was at the same level as, um, Carson Wentz as a career. Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz right now is as good as Dak Prescott played last year. Um, and you can see that kind of in, in, in the record, um, of the Cowboys last year. They, you know, they went nine and seven last year. You know, they barely missed the playoffs, but, um, he, he, as, you know, just looking at him, he, he played pretty well. He played pretty well. Um, but this year, what people have been criticizing him for, you know, bad decision-making, bad accuracy, um, not taking control of games, is it, it's, it's kind of shown this year. Um, and his rating has taken a huge hit. You know, second place, by the way, was Aaron Rodgers at 5.8. That was his decrease. Uh, Dak Prescott's decrease is 13. 13 is the difference between Case Keenum and Carson Wentz right now. All right, so that's it. Uh, another couple honorable mentions were uh, Deshaun Watson and Jimmy Garoppolo, but we're not. I'm not going to include him in the uh, list here because uh, they've each played fewer than half of an NFL season um, in their career up to this point. So it's not exactly a statistic uh, significant sample size. But that's all for me. That's the uh, top five risers and fallers in quarterback level in 2018 so far through week 10. Make sure you give this video like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Um, we'll be back for more content. Peace.